Hello everyone, this is Drew Naylor, and today I'm going to be showing you something I've been working on for three years, actually. It's going to be the three-year anniversary of me working on this in July. Now before we get started on the video, Mitty wants to say hi. And right here is a picture of Mitty, sleeping right under my computer monitor. Now that I've shown that picture of Mitty, let's actually get into what I want to show to you is a program that I've been working on for three years, like I said. It's my application launcher. This is the third go at an application launcher and it launches Microsoft Office application. This is actually not the first time I've done something like this. The first time was just a folder, you know, with all the shortcuts for Microsoft Office. The second one was an MHTML page that I made with Microsoft Word that launched the program so I could load up the web page in Internet Explorer. MHTML only works with Internet Explorer, so I had to use that for it. I had a table with like the icons. I took screenshots of the icons and cut them out in the Microsoft Office folder. And this is my third go at making an application launcher, and this time I made it with Visual Basic. I'll show you the code in a minute because it's open source. But first I'm going to actually open it. Here is the, um, this is the current stable release of what I currently call Drew's App Launcher. Now, as you can see, you've got Microsoft Excel, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, Word 2010. I've organized these into columns, as you can see, standard applications, the ones that most people would use, a consumer would use. And then we've got the professional applications, those being Microsoft Access, InfoPath, Publisher, and SharePoint Workspace. I don't have a launcher for sh regular SharePoint, or whatever it would be called. I don't really use Microsoft SharePoint at all, so I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video. Okay, I forgot to say this earlier. Right here I talk about it where I'm like, Microsoft SharePoint, I don't know where SharePoint regularly is, blah blah blah, stuff like that. I say, I don't really know where it's stored. So if people can help me with this, uh, that'd be great. But I think it's just online, not a desktop application. But anyway, that's some excellent spacing right there. I just realized, hmm, you have to fix that for 2.8, I guess. But anyway, if anyone has any versions of Microsoft Office, specifically 2010, that have more features than Office 2010 Professional Plus, in additional applications and stuff, please let me know what their name is. Send me a picture of the icon and what it does. Put it on my um, GitHub page right here in a new issue. Thank you. Under potentially unused applications, we've got Microsoft Query in 2010 in question mark because I'm not really sure. It says it's for Microsoft Office 2010 but it looks really old, so I don't know. Maybe it's just for the sake of copyright, I don't know. And then we've got the clip organizer, which I got confused uh, with something else. And then we've got the Microsoft Picture Manager, which is just called Microsoft Office. Really weird, even though it's not. This one program is not Microsoft Office, it's just weird. Then we've got the OneNote Quick Launcher, which will launch OneNote down here. And then under Options, we've got the Office 2010 Language Preferences. And then we've got General Options for the application. I'm going to go in here, and we've got a new window that pops up that asks, it says Options, where is Microsoft Office located? It says, please type in the text box, this one right here, the drive where you installed Microsoft Office. On. Note that you cannot use backspaces, lowercase letters, lowercase a, b, or c, or numbers or special characters. Now I said that so that people, and I made it so that it rejects anything that's not uppercase letters like this, uppercase English letters of the English alphabet, because it could cause issues with trying to launch Office, and people wouldn't know what's going on like if they do a space see it says you can only type capital letters such as a b c etc you also cannot press backspace although the delete key works fine for clearing the text box now if you've installed this to like instead of drive c 
you've installed it to something like drive F or whatever, you can change this. You can take this, change it to F, hit save, settings saved, and then it closes it. And then if I try clicking on Microsoft Word, it'll say it's not found because there's no drive F. It looks on drive F. I'm going to get my USB flash drive. Actually, no, before I do that, I'm going to show that at the very end. I'm going to change, I'm going to click defaults and it's going to set the values back to default, like C, like that one, or we can hit clear and it clears it. You can type in something like C and we hit save, setting saved, or we hit, or we type in here like G, we don't want G, hit cancel, it brings back what you just had. Now before I show what happens if you change this to something and you don't have that drive plugged into your computer. I'm going to show you that in a minute, but first I'm going to show you how it actually works. We're going to click on Microsoft Word and it launches right here. We can close it, Excel, it launches, it's right there. PowerPoint, it launches. I don't know how to make it start like that, start maximized. So if somebody can help me with that, tell me how to do that, that'd be great. Now. Microsoft Query 2010. See? It looks so old. I mean, it says Microsoft Query 14.0, copyright 2010 Microsoft. Okay, copyright. But this is not. Why? Why is this Office 2010? It looks so old. I mean, I guess it works for some people, but. Oh well. Oh. Probably something that I should talk about is you've probably noticed these icons right here. Like for Word, they don't look like the program. I made these myself for the most part. I, I took from a website called openclipart.org for these right here and then the globe right here as well as the sun right there, the pencil and the mountains and that book and that person and the window and those arrows. I took those from Open Clip Art, combined them all into GIMP, and then made icons for this. But for these icons, I made these myself. Also with GIMP, I tried to make it look similar to the Microsoft Office one. See, we'll pull up Word right here and see so you can see them. They're, they're similar. I made them look similar to the application, but they're different. I made them the similar colors so that people will be like, oh, that's for this. And so that people won't be confused when they see the icons as much. So I made them look similar, but because they're not the same ones in an earlier version of the app launcher, before I made these icons, they were just Microsoft Office icons. And I figured, hmm, they probably won't like that too much because copyrights. And so as a result of that, I am not distributing older versions that have the Microsoft Office icons. Uh, I also made this icon right here, myself. Under About the Application, we can see the title of it, the version, what it was compiled for. Well, this is technically not compiled for 64-bit systems. I actually have it where it goes to the Program Files x86 directory. To launch the Office applications if you have the 64-bit edition. I have it for that. And the 32-bit edition is just regular program files. So that's how that works. Eventually I'm going to make it so that they're combined into one. So you choose 32 or 64-bit. Now it says my copyright and then the description and then when it was compiled it's not automatic. I have to change this every time I make a binary release. So it's not automatic. And because of that, I have to remember every time I make a new release of this, I have to change that every time. Which would be nice if it automatically did that, but I don't know how to make it do that. And then I have a copyright notice from Microsoft's, for Microsoft's copyrights, just so that it's like, hey, it's this. And then it says this application is licensed under the GNU GPL version 3 plus and Drew's modification exception. 
The modification exception basically says that you have to change the icon right here, this icon down here as well, and in here I have a thing down here that runs. You have to change that icon too, and you have to change the name and this icon, the executable icon. In the future, for the next, when I redo this, I'm going to actually have it just GPL3, no GPL3+, plus, and no exception, just to make it more simple. Um, I've got notes. Some applications will launch on the taskbar while others will launch on top. Made for launching the default ones in Office 2010 Pro Plus. Hmm. I just realized that that's really old. That's really old text. Microsoft Office Pro Plus 2010. That, that's not how it's... That's not how it looks in Office. Not all Office 2010 shortcuts are included. If it says the word next in the title bar, it's beta version, which means that some features may be broken. Now, not really. This is a stable release. And I call it next because when I, I put next in the title bar and right here, because next was when I put in these icons. The previously standard version or stable version was the one with the Microsoft icons. So I said that, don't worry, this is stable for me at least. Some features might be broken though. And if I didn't get one, if you didn't get a copy of it uh, in the download, please contact me through my website below with your uh, email address and I will send you a copy. I won't use your email address for any malicious purposes. You can use that link right here, main website. Go under contact me and fill in, fill in your information and then I'll send one to you, but I'll get to something on that in a, in a minute. Under here we have the version history panel. It says this version history text box has been deprecated in favor of the buttons below. For the 32-bit and 64-bit version history, this box will be removed in the future. This basically has the history of my other, of other application, or the older versions. Getting ready to add some secret features, which was probably the general options. That was probably that. Now, the edition specific version history. When we click on either of these, they'll go to my drewsapps.weebly.com page and they'll say Drew's App Launcher version 2.7 32-bit release. This is the version that this is. And then under here I have a new one called Read This. I've released a preview of 2.8 of my app launcher. I'll get to that in a minute. Note that it's buggy. I'm not planning on using this site for future not update notifications. So I've set the URL of the version history buttons on the About page to the GitHub releases feed. I'll make one final update notification on this site when 2.8 is complete. Download here and I've got this page. What this means is I'm not planning on using my drewsapps.weebly.com website, this one right here, I'm not planning on using this anymore for update news. See, I've got important notice regarding the future of this particular site. I'm planning on using the site, you can pause and read this if you want. So next we've got the 64-bit version history which is exactly the same. I'm going to minimize this. Uh, under general options, you might have seen this earlier. Load the change log in your default browser recommended. If I uncheck that, it says use the old internal page to view change logs. Now, in version 3.0, it, it won't support the old internal change log pages. Now what this is, is a new window right here. And it says, it's basically RSS stuff, powered by RSS to HTML. And I figured, oh, this would be good, but eh, Firefox and Internet Explorer can read RSS documents. If you have Chrome, it won't work. If you have Google Chrome, this won't look right. It'll look just, it'll just show you all your RSS feed code. It won't look right. Now, I'm going to go get my USB drive. Plug it in, show you what happens when I change the drive to F. And as you can see, my USB drive is a USB 
device and it says this drive can perform faster well it's good enough I'm gonna check something okay I'm back if you don't even have Microsoft Office installed well I mean if you have it installed on a different hard drive what you can do is you can go under general options change that to say my USB drive is M now so we change it to M and we hit save okay now it looks on drive M instead of drive C. So if we run Microsoft Word, instead of Microsoft Word popping up, we get Dummy Office. Dummy Office Word, I called it. You have successfully watched, launched the Word Dummy component. Click OK to continue. Actually, this is an old version of Dummy Office, I think. Yeah, this is an old version. I think. Hold on. Yeah, this is an old version. I have a new version that I made available recently, and now it has a license button. It says GPL v3 plus, and okay, okay, so that's that. In the newer version of Dummy Office, it'll show you, you'll have a license button right here. This is just the one that I have on my USB flash drive. It'll just pop up, oh, this is, yeah, this is a dummy component. Like if you don't have Microsoft Office installed, you can place these files into where it would usually be installed. I'm not going to tell you where it would usually be installed, just so that nobody messes up Microsoft Office. And there's no installer for this. There never will be an installer because it could cause problems on the computer. So there's never going to be an installer for Dummy Office. But if you put it in the location that Microsoft Office usually puts its files, if you don't have Microsoft Office installed, you can do this both for the 32-bit, where it would be on a 64-bit computer program files, x86, and program files. You can do that on both of them. So if you want to test out the 64-bit edition of my app launcher, you can do that. And then say 32-bit, try running something that says file not found. Go under general options, set it to M, save, okay, and we run my, something like Microsoft Word. Now it's running from the program files folder on my USB drive. So this is pretty much the same, or it's exactly the same program, except you can see right here it's a little different. It looks a little different. I don't know how I did that, but it does, and looks exactly the same, pretty much works exactly the same. All right, during this part of the video right here, where I'm talking about how it works this way and this one works this way, I was really confusing and I can't figure out a good way to cut it to make it not confusing at all. So I'm just gonna re-record this part. So the 32-bit version of the app launcher, this one right here on the right, the one on the right right here, this one goes in program files. This one, the 64-bit version over here, goes onto program files x86. So that should make more sense. You may be able to see this is the same, same stuff, except the 64-bit edition is actually lighter than the 32-bit. It's smaller than the 32-bit version because there's a bunch of extra icons and stuff in this one that I tried messing around with icons a long time ago but didn't really work. This Everything works the same. I'm gonna set the options back. Defaults. Okay. Save. I tell the user that the settings have been set back to the defaults. Click save just in case they want to back out of it at the very last minute in case they don't want it to be reset to default. Just in case for whatever reason, and I have a message saying a setting saved before it closes. So yeah, that's they're pretty much the same. There's no, oh this is compiled for 64-bit or 32-bit. I didn't tell Visual Studio to do different CPU types. So you can run both of these. I'm pretty sure you can run both of these on 32-bit and both on 64-bit. But the 32-bit version won't work properly. 
on a 64-bit computer because it's looking for files in the program files folder. Theoretically, you could use the 32-bit version if you have a 64-bit version of Microsoft Office, but that's not supported at all, so try at your own risk. Mainly because the 64-bit version of Office is really awful, so that's why. Now you may have noticed these other two shortcuts right here that say App Launcher 2.8 Snapshot Preview. These, oh, maybe I should go into 64-bit version first. These are pre-release builds of the next version of my App Launcher known as 2.8. Um, now, why are they pre-release? Well, I figured, why not give the people watching this particular video something to try out while I'm working on the next version instead of having to build it from source. So in here, as you can see, there's under general options, it's the same, all this is the same. Uh, everything looks the same except for snapshot preview up here. But then if we go into about the application, things look different. See right here? Drew's GitHub profile. More applications has been replaced by this. And Drew's main website. Her main website has been with, replaced with Drew's main website. This now goes to the GitHub release notes page instead of this one. And this one does the same for 64 bit. And this is still here and pre-release software or whatever like that 2.8 snapshot preview 1 copyright 2013-2016 app compile date so most of the stuff looks the same I mean this is different a little bit but the place that is or the the major change in this build of my app launcher is under general options it may look the same at first but it acts different if you hit the clear button, it automatically focuses to the text box. Now if we type something in, say D, it says you can only type capital letters such as A, B, C, etc. Click the clear button to empty the text box. In the current stable version, it says, so you have to hit clear and click here and then type something in. It says you can only type capital letters such as A, B, C, etc. You can also, you also cannot press backspace although the delete key works fine for clearing the text box. I forgot to change that message when I put in the clear button. But now, in 2.8, now it says click the clear button to empty the text box, so it knows this exists now. So now it tells the user about it, so that's good. User experience improvement, it's always welcome. But I think that's about it for this one. But this is where the code right now is as of, um, uh, well, I didn't really work on it today at all, except for like cloning, pushing and pulling from my developer branch. I pulled from the developer branch to the main branch, which it's fine because I pushed from, I merged from the main branch to the developer branch, so merged it. Ah, it, it didn't mess anything up, I don't think. So anyway, that's how it looks right now. If you go to github.com, yeah, Firefox. Right now, Firefox is 46.0. I haven't updated to 46.1 yet. This bug, though. Ah, this graphics bug, it looks awful. And look, <laughs> that's, ah. Well, I mean, it's fine. But right here, you can see that I have my repository. This program is open source. You can download the source code, take a look at it, change it, whatever. As long as you do it under the GPL v3 plus. And you change the icons. And yes, I know about trademarks. They're expensive. But if you're on here, you can go under releases and see here's pre-release. Here's the address. If you just go to github.com slash drewnailer like this, if you click right here, if you're for the 32-bit version or a 64-bit version, uh, whichever one you want, you can click on either one. And then you can go under 
releases. And right here at the top it has Drew's App Launcher version 2.8 snapshot preview 1 64 bit. And and here's the change log right here. Everything I've changed. And then what I removed and then the downloads. Just click here on the MSO App Launcher 64 version 2.8 preview 1. If you click on that, you can it gives you options to save and then you can extract that. There's a README in that folder as well as a copy of this change log right here. All you have to do is just save it on your computer, extract those to somewhere, and then read the README. Make sure you read the README. It's got important stuff in it. I'll create a shortcut to the MS Office app launcher, 64.exe, or 32.exe. Create a shortcut to that file on your desktop or something, and then down here I've got the latest release. I recommend downloading this one if you're somebody who wants to use it for everyday use. Don't download the snapshot yet, the snapshot preview. Don't download that yet. That's just if you want to. Right here. If you want to look at where the code is right now, you can do this. But if you don't want to, if you want stable, download, scroll down and download 2.7. Download this one. Here's the change log. Go to this page and read it. And then here's the previous release 2.6.1. Download the one that you want. Or if you want 32-bit, go to the 32-bit repository, click releases, and download. If you have issues, if you have problems with it, you can go here to the issues tab create a new issue, type it, type in issue with stuff, obviously give it a descriptive title, if you don't I'll change it, but please put in something that's descriptive. Now if you just do stuff do, doesn't work, if you just do that I can't help you, you have to put in options page doesn't work properly. Now if you say that then we can start working on how to do it. Then you can click on submit new issue and under labels you can click here. You can give it a bug label, a deprecation issue. Like if something is being deprecated generally I will do that or if it's like overhaul that's for version 3.0, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I'll put on if it's invalid, if it doesn't work right, or if it's a duplicate or somebody else can, anyone can do this. But if it's like an enhancement or whatever, you can, you can say that, you can put whatever you want on it, as long as it's, as long as it applies to the issue. And you can, you can assign me to the issue if you want. And you can, can hit submit new issue and see now it's open and now I can say what doesn't work I can say what doesn't work comment and then if we resolve it like it's fixed now or I can do it from a git commit and then I can hit close and comment so now it's closed so do that if you do that then it'll it'll tell me that there's a problem that I need to fix something or if some if other people work on it with me generally speaking right now I'm the only one who's working on it but if I had other people working on it with me if other people worked on it too they could like do pull requests if like somebody comes up with a new feature or fixes a bug they can do a pull they can make a pull request and I can check out their pull request and if I like what they changed, then I can bring it into my version. Now, the next thing that I'm going to be talking about, I've been going on for 40 minutes already. But the next thing I want to talk about is my new website. Previously, I was using this website right here, Drew Nailer Emulation. Mm, it's on Weebly. See? It's kind of old. I mean, it's not kind of old, but I've had this since 2011. I've had this website since 2011. Right here, this 2011 through 2016. 
This is just how long this particular website has been around. It's not a copyright notice or anything, it's just, hey, I've been around for this long. And I've kind of gotten tired of Weebly, because they got, they were, back with Weebly 1.0, they call it. It was like, okay, I can use this. And then Weebly 2.0 came out, and I was like, I love this. And then 3.0 came out, and then completely ruined it. So, and it made it really annoying to use. Like, I would have to click buttons multiple times, like up here's the publish button, I would have to click it multiple times for it to work. So it just got really annoying to work on this website. But now I have it on GitHub Pages. I have one on GitHub Pages right here. It looks much more modern. If you visit this website on a phone, actually here, I'll just take it. If you visit this website on a phone, it'll just resize. It'll just resize like this. This is how it looks on a phone. Yeah, this is how it looks like on a phone. I'm not completely done with this yet, as you can see. There's buttons for external Jekyll forms and source code. Those aren't mine. As you can see, I took the Slim Pickens theme. It's kind of funny because there really weren't that many good themes for it. So I just took this and modified it because it's open source. I modified it, made it look a lot better. As you can see, I changed it up and I'm, I'm moving my blog posts over. See, I'm moving my blog posts over and I've got ROM hacking cheat codes, editors. See, I've got a bunch of stuff on here. I think it looks better than the old one. Here's the old one. Here's the new one. Old one, new one. Now if you visit this one on a on a phone, it looks just, if it doesn't work as well as it used to. But on here, it just, when it shrinks up, when it gets smaller, it just looks really nice, a lot better. And I, at the bottom I have a footer. Usually on the Slim Pickens theme, the footer is sticky but I made it so that it's not sticky, so it stays at the bottom of the page. Now, sometimes it looks weird, other times it doesn't. Now, right here I have where all trademarks and copyrights are owned by their respective companies and organizations. On my old website, I just have Mario and all related trademarks and Windows and all related trademarks are property of Nintendo and Microsoft Corporation, right there. But on here, I have, it's all by their respective companies and organizations just to cover everything. And then most of the content excluding scripts and theming on the site is owned by Drew Naylor unless otherwise specified. So to cover everything, make sure I cover everything. So yeah, that should be it. Now as you can see I have a repository for my application launcher icons. Right here I've got all my icons right here. And you can download them. Right, under one release, I have app launcher dash icons underscore drew dash one version 1.0. This is simply an archive of the images I use for my office app launcher. So yeah, I've got that there. If you want to download my icons, I've got it there. Under repositories, I have with my website, app launcher, app launcher, an exported thing from Google Code, test repositories. Here's Dummy Office, another test repository. Here's Dummy Office. Basically, you can go under one release that says, only use this if you know what you're doing. I'm not responsible for computer problems. Obviously, use at your own risk. And you can read this. If you download it, put all the stuff where it should go. Yeah. So this video is primarily a 10,000 views special. Not subscribers, sadly, but 10,000 views special on my U for my YouTube channel. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the program. I personally use it sometimes on my own computer. I personally sometimes use it. The other day I opened it, Microsoft Word, typed in words and then closed it just to use it. Oh. Now I'm going to show you the code. Right here, as you can see, got the code. You can download the code and take a look at it. It's right here. 
and applications to launch. This is a region that hides it so that we don't have all this. And yep, it's on my code. View code. See here. And you can look at all the rest of the code on the repositories. Right here. There. And you can clone it or download the zip folder. Currently you need a git uh, windows visual studio .NET framework latest updates for it and then office or dummy office I need to update this obviously because it's already available and then there's stuff here instructions for getting it up to up and running and why do I need to create one so just read all this read read through it and then under the wiki I've got all the old change logs and how do I figure it out change logs when I take it out and then 64-bit change logs what version should I use so stuff like that thank you for watching please comment in the description if you like the video please subscribe to stay up to date on all my videos go here go download it please I want feedback I really want feedback on this program so please do this this these applications both require a .NET framework version 4.0 or higher and basically the specifications are the same as the .NET 4 specifications currently it runs on Windows XP all the way up to Windows 10 but version 3.0 won't have support for XP or Vista go under issues I have all the issues that are currently open read here before you make an issue goodbye